I'm Alexander Spellman, Vice President of Business Development with Sigma Meyer Corp Revenue. And thank you for joining me on this pre-recorded webinar to discuss Virginia County cigarette excise tax stamps. With the passage of SB 588 and HB 785, counties now have the authorization to begin collecting local cigarette excise taxes effective July 1. We're aware that SB 1326 is currently under consideration and may have some impact on how counties choose to proceed with local excise taxes for cigarettes. It may be that you choose to do one on your own. It may be that a jurisdiction may choose to join a board construct similar to the NBCTB. For today's discussion, we're going to talk about cigarette excise tax stamps and how they can facilitate and support local county excise tax programs, regardless of whether you're an individual jurisdiction implementing the program on your own, or whether you may be joining a more formal structure like a cigarette tax board. So with that, I'm going to bring up a presentation. I'm going to walk you through the basic 101 on cigarette excise tax stamps. So the agenda today is structured in five different pieces, a little bit of a background about who we are and our role in the current stamping programs that are in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I'll talk about what a tax stamp is and how it gets used, what options are available with a tax stamp to make sure it is authentic and has been issued by a jurisdiction, how do you then verify those stamps, and finally, how do you manage the tax stamp process? Starting with Meyer Corp Revenue, SICPA acquired Meyer Corp Revenue in 2010, and SICPA is proud to maintain its U.S. headquarters in Springfield, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. SICPA has been a global provider of security inks that are used in currencies, including the U.S. dollar, as well as security capabilities designed to protect global passports, identity documents, driver's licenses, and other forms of indicia. In addition, SICPA maintains a presence in more than 30 countries around the world, and we deliver a variety of regulatory compliance and tax processing solutions for our government customers around the world. In acquiring My Accord Revenue in 2010, SICPA also now services the state and local market here in the United States. More than 43 states currently utilize the SICPA Fuson tax stamp, including the Commonwealth of Virginia. And several states utilize SICPA track and trace programs, including the states of California and Massachusetts. Together, SICPA Meyer Accord Revenue also services more than 160 local jurisdictions here in the U.S., including municipalities, cities, and townships here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, as well as other local stamping jurisdictions across the United States. So what are tax stamps exactly? Well, the Fuson tax stamp that I referenced earlier is a thermal tax stamp. And what that means is it's applied to a pack of cigarettes through a combination of heat and pressure. It's essentially melted on to the polypropylene wrapping of a cigarette pack. Stamping agents, typically wholesalers or distributors, apply tax stamps using tax stamp application equipment. This equipment is usually provided by third party vendors like USI and Red Stamp. And these machines are designed to specifically work with state and local Fuson tax stamps. They can apply the tax stamps at a very high rate of speed, typically between 60 and 90 cartons a minute, so that stamping does not provide an imposition to wholesaler operations. Stamping agents in the Commonwealth have to apply and manage a variety of different types of stamps. So it becomes vital that any stamp issued by a local jurisdiction be in alignment with existing stamp application equipment and processes. To that end, the Code of Virginia specifically requires that any local jurisdiction looking to issue a tax stamp use a tax stamp of the same technology that is used by the State Department of Taxation. Currently, there are several different types of stamps that are in use in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Cigarette tax stamps are issued by the state, by the Northern Virginia Cigarette Tax Board, and by currently authorized local jurisdictions. Meyer Corp Revenue is the current provider of these stamps. And you'll see on the right, the two stamps that we currently provide for the state, 
the state 20, which is goes on packs containing 20 sticks of cigarettes, and the state 25, which goes on packs containing 25 sticks of cigarettes. The state also administers and issues a joint stamp on behalf of them and the NVCTB, which you see there in the middle, and that is provided by Meyer Court Revenue through our contract with State Department of Taxation. And that denotes not only that that is a authorized tax payment to the state, but it is also going to be an authorized tax payment to the NVCTB as a local cigarette tax board. At the local level, we offer two different types of stamps. A generic municipal stamp is currently used by cities, municipalities, and townships based on a shared design. So the shared design allows for personalization. For example, a zip code can be overlaid on that design or an abbreviation for a jurisdiction can be overlaid on that design to give it a unique visual distinction from another jurisdiction using a generic municipal stamp. But it's a shared design used by all. We also have custom stamps, which can be specifically designed for a jurisdiction. And you'll see some examples on the lower right, where the visual design of the stamp and the graphics used in the stamp provide a, a very immediate differentiation of one stamp from another. Stamps are typically formatted in rolls of 30,000 stamps per roll and 15,000 stamps per roll. And again, this is designed to work with the equipment used by authorized stamping agents to apply the stamps at high rates of speed. Here are some examples of the equipment that the stamping agents utilize. These are high volume stamping machines, and you can see they are relatively complex instruments. Essentially, the process is that a carton is fed into a conveyor belt. The machine will open the carton. The machine will apply 10 stamps to the 10 packs in the carton, one stamp per pack in a five by two layout. And then the machine will glue the carton shut. This enables the wholesaler to manage the cigarettes as cartons, but also be able to get to the individual retail unit, the cigarette pack, to ensure a stamp is placed on the product. In addition, there are some packs that do not conform to the width and openings required for the machines. These are a small percentage of the market. However, hand stamping does occur for these products from time to time in order to ensure they also have a tax stamp placed on them. And in that case, the, whole, the stamping agent will use a manual stamping process using a heat activated device working with the stamps that we have provided for that jurisdiction. So I'm considering a tax stamp. I know I have to, to, to utilize a tax stamp consistent with the state's solution. What options are available to me? Well, tax stamps provide a vital part of both a tax collection and compliance architecture for cigarette, ta cigarette taxes. By putting a tax stamp on a pack of cigarettes, it's a visual confirmation that that pack has moved from a legitimate authorized source and that the tax is going to be paid or has been paid on that product. So with that value, tax stamps have to be protected. We don't want them to be counterfeited or have unauthorized duplications of stamps, we want to make sure the stamps are authentically issued by the originating party. So we provide a variety of security mechanisms in the stamp to facilitate the identification of a legitimate stamp from a counterfeit or illegitimate duplication. And there are four levels of authentication security we provide in our tax stamps for both the state, for NVCTB, as well as our generic municipal and custom municipal customers. The first level is overt. These are security features you can see with the naked eye. So for example, here you'll see on the image, unique numbering and a variable image. You can see these with the naked eye and they are verifiable with the naked eye in a production stamp. The second level is semi-covert features. These are features that are recognizable by the naked eye but do require a device to confirm. So for example, microprint. Microprint, I can see with the naked eye that it's there, but I need a magnifying glass to actually discern the individual text within the microprint. The third stage, we have our covert features. These are invisible. They can only be detected with a device, such as a tagging tester, that will beep or otherwise make a noise showing the presence of a security feature. And these are designed to provide 
enforcement and inspection with capabilities that would not be otherwise known to someone trying to duplicate the stamp. The final piece are forensic features. These we say for our laboratories so that as a customer, if you have a tax stamp that you have a question about, you can send that to us and we will do a forensic analysis of the stamp and return to you a court admissible summary of what we found and whether or not the stamp is authentic. So once I have these security features in place, how do I verify them? And we provide a variety of tools aligned to the different levels of security so that you can validate the different features of the stamp. As we said, for overt features, most of these are just the naked eye. For semi-covert features, we have a variety of tools, including ultraviolet uh, pens, magnifying glasses, and other loops that allow you to interrogate various features that we include on the stamp, in addition to seeing the visibility of those features on the stamp. And then for covert, we provide specialized detectors that only get sold to government inspectors and law enforcement staff to look for those invisible features in the stamp and confirm the authenticity of the stamp. With a decision now to implement a stamp, then you have the question of how do you manage that process? Tax stamps require a variety of different constructs in order to effectively manage. The first question is, what type of stamp am I going to use? We offer a variety of opportunities and designs to look at creating a distinct and unique stamp for a jurisdiction, or it can provide a generic stamp that is personalized for a jurisdiction. On the upper right corner, you will see the proposed generic county stamp that is available for jurisdictions. This stamp will be including a number of security features, and most importantly, we'll have a personalization, which you see in the VACOX top line, that will make it unique to a jurisdiction. So you can utilize a jurisdictional abbreviation, a zip code, or some other identification feature, so you will know as a jurisdiction that the generic stamp was issued by you. We will also have an invisible feature, Sigma Guard, which is a tagget that the unique chemical construct that can be used with some of the covert detection devices I talked about earlier, as well as an ultraviolet watermark and chemical forensic features. So this is a very robust stamp, similar to the feature set that is currently used with the municipal stamps, but a different design to differentiate the level of taxation these stamps are supporting. We also will offer a custom stamp, and you'll see in the lower right, this is an example of a stamp we designed in Cook County, Illinois. Well, we can use a variety of background colors and visual design elements to your specifications to support whatever unique visual design it is you want to use. With a custom stamp, we also can offer additional features, including number personalization. In this case, you'll see there's 10 digits of numbers on the stamp. The first or top five digits are the roll ID of that stamp. The second or five digits will be the positioning of that stamp on the roll. So whereas a generic stamp will use the top row for that abbreviation and then provide the roll ID for that stamp, with a custom stamp, you get the roll ID and a unique uh, spacing of that stamp on the roll, creating a unique identif identifier for that stamp that is distinct from any other stamp that gets issued. We will also include the secure invisible tagget, a ultraviolet watermark, and add the option of being able to use a microprint on the stamp. Pricing for stamps is typically, typically provided on a per thousand basis or what we call per M. And pricing is typically tiered based on the volume and type of stamp that you use. A generic stamp can be more cost effective for a given tier than a custom stamp, depending on your needs and requirements. SIPA MyCard revenue typically requires anywhere from 45 to 60 days to work with you to get you through the artwork approval process to determine which type of stamp and what features you want to have and make sure we have you in production to be able to receive those stamps by a certain date. So as we look towards July 1, this is something important to keep in mind as you do your planning. Stamps will be formatted on rolls of 30,000 stamps and 15,000 stamps, 100% consistent with the current state requirements and wholesaler high volume stamping machine rule infrastructure. 
We will also offer stamps in minimum quantities of five rolls per order. So small quantity jurisdictions, if you have a small need, you have the ability to utilize the stamps in very small increments uh, at a time through your ordering process. But in addition to the stamp, you're going to be grappling with a variety of other constructs. A cigarette excise tax program requires different capabilities to answer the critical questions. Who has to pay the tax? On what activity do they have to pay the tax? And how do they remit the tax? So when you look at cigarette excise taxes, you're going to have different components that you're going to need to put in place. So a licensing or registration function will answer the question, who has to pay the tax? How do I identify and know who my taxpayers are? And do I have the tools in place to do that? For stamps, you're going to need to be able to facilitate stamping agents ordering stamps from you that they can then place on the packs of cigarettes. So there's an entire process around how do we facilitate the ordering and distribution of the tax stamps. There's the stamping itself, which how do I know which jurisdiction a product is intended to go to and is the appropriate tax stamp being put on that pack for that jurisdiction? There's the, the collection and distribution of revenues, and this becomes especially important in a board construct where if we're collecting revenues and we have different jurisdictions with different tax rates, how do we make sure everyone's getting their fair share? Or if I'm a single jurisdiction, do I have the infrastructure in place to ingest the monthly tax reports that I will require from stamping agents? And do I have the ability to collect the payments and reconcile all that information? And the final step is the compliance and enforcement. Do I have the capability, do I have the tools to conduct site visits at different retail and wholesale locations to confirm they are stamping all the products they should be for my jurisdiction? And while SIGPA Myercord has tools for all these areas, which we, we would welcome the chance to talk with you further about, I'm going to focus on one area in particular, and that's stamp ordering. Myercord Revenues Direct to Distributor Service is used by 15 states currently today to facilitate the electronic ordering and fulfillment of tax stamp orders. Under historical engagements with our customers, Myercord Revenue would produce a large quantity of tax stamps for a customer and then deliver those to the customer in bulk. The customer was responsible for taking those stamps in, storing them securely, fulfilling orders when they came in, so grabbing the physical stamps out of inventory and either giving them to people in a walk-in or shipping them to a stamping agent for an online or electronic order, and then having reconciliation processes in place to make sure that the stamp inventory was intact no stamps have been misplaced, stolen, or otherwise discarded. With Direct-to-Distributor, we take that away, that responsibility away from you and allow you to focus on the, what you do best, which is administration and compliance. With Direct-to-Distributor, we will produce the stamps and store the stamps for you at our NASPO secure, certified facility in Carroll Stream, Illinois. We provide you an electronic portal so that when an order does come in, you can just key that order in and tell us what quantity of stamps and to whom to ship those stamps to. MyRecord Revenue will then pick those stamps out of inventory, pack them in boxes, and ship them via the appropriate class of service directly to the stamping agent facility. And then we provide you reporting reconciliation on all of that activity so you can ensure that when the tax reports come in from the wholesaler, you can check those against the stamp orders that have been made in a given period. So it really does reduce the burden on county staff in terms of the entire tax stamp ordering process to ensure that stamping agents are getting the tax stamps they need at the time they need them so they can continue to sell and distribute cigarette packs to your jurisdiction. So a few considerations and next steps before I wrap up. One is this is a pre-recorded webinar and we appreciate you, you know, attending today but we realize you may have questions. Uh, we will be working with the Virginia Association of Counties in the next few days to schedule a live webinar where we will host an open Q&A forum for any questions that you may have as a result of viewing this webinar. In addition, I have provided my personal contact information, both my mobile number and email, and certainly encourage you to reach out if you have any questions that I can answer directly for you or if I could provide any additional information on the MyRecord Revenue tax stamps 
and associated programs that we offer. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today on this pre-recorded webinar, and I'll look forward to an opportunity to speak to you in person, hopefully in the days to come, as we work together on this journey to implementing county cigarette tax programs. And with that, I thank you for your time and hope you all have a wonderful day.